We Muslims were the torchbearers of civilization. We laid the foundation of knowledge, education and research. We produced extraordinary scholars in the fields of mathematics, sciences, arts, astronomy, literature and many more fields. We became the world's superpower. We Muslims were a humane and very progressive civilization which we shared with the rest of the world. We were world leaders and we Muslims were second to none. That is our history, gloriously and proudly Muslims and that legacy is now dead. The question that should bother us are, number one, what happened to us Muslims? Number two, how did we end up as third grade citizens of this modern, highly sophisticated technological world? Number three, how and why did we lose it all? Stay with me and let us find out how and why. Salamun Alaikum. Peace be with you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the specially merciful. I am Ayub Karim and welcome to my channel, Quran Inspires Me. So, what happened to us Muslims? How did we end up as less than third grade citizens of this modern world? How and why did we lose it all? The answers are in our history. The narrative goes like this in a nutshell. Allah gave the Injil to Prophet Isa, which he taught to his followers and which they practiced. That was Deenillah. His followers after him began teaching and practicing the same Injil, the same Deenillah that Prophet Jesus taught and practiced. However, the generations that followed the previous generations were still teaching the Injil, but now they began adding narrations, sayings about Prophet Jesus. And this initiated the process of adulteration of the teachings of Prophet Jesus. These additions were the impurities that were added to Deenillah. This process of adulteration continued and over a period of time, the Deen of Allah, the prescribed way of Allah became greatly polluted and vastly subdued. The Injil became an abandoned entity and the narrations of Prophet Isa, the Hadith of Prophet Isa became the pivotal teaching which gave rise to the religion of Christianity. So now we have the Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And then of course, Christians have the self-appointed disciple of Jesus, namely Saint Paul. Let's go further back into history. Allah gave the Torah to Prophet Musa, which he taught to his people and which they practiced. That was the Nillah. His followers after him began teaching and practicing the same Torah, the same Deen Allah that Prophet Musa taught and practiced. However, the generations that followed the previous generations were still teaching the Torah, but now they began adding narrations, sayings about Prophet Musa. And this initiated the process of contamination of the message of Prophet Moses. These additions were the impurities that were added to Deen Allah, and over a period of time, the prescribed Deen of Allah became greatly polluted and vastly subdued. The Torah became an abandoned entity and the narrations of Prophet Musa, the Hadith of Prophet Musa became the pivotal teaching which gave rise to the religion of Judaism. So now we have their Hadith which is called the Talmud. But it did not stop there. The Rabbis started writing their own regulations and rulings which they say are the Rabbinical laws. These Rabbinical laws supersede the Talmud and what is left of the Torah. Today the Jewish people only recite the Torah for blessings. And this is the wrong thing that we Muslims did. We abandoned the revelation of Allah, the Quran, for other books. Watch my video QIM 11 where Prophet Muhammad will say that we have abandoned the Quran. We also like the Jews and Christians moved away from Deen Allah that Prophet Muhammad taught and practiced. We created our own Hadith literature in preference to the Quran. We did not take lessons from the history of previous prophets and their followers. We traded the Quran for man-made hadith books and other lesser books. We say we believe in the Quran, but we do not practice the Quran. Instead, we sincerely practice everything else beside the Quran. We are doing exactly the same wrong thing that previous Muslims did. So much so that when a fatwa is issued, that fatwa carries greater authority than the Quran even when that fatwa contradicts the Quran. So, contradicting the Quran, ignoring the Quran, discarding the Quran for other books that have no authorization from Allah has become our current lifestyle. We have been taught 
and brought up with a very weird contradictory prescription to achieve good in this world and good in the hereafter. We have been brainwashed into believing that this prescription is farz, it is compulsory. This compulsory prescription is that we take a laxative and a sleepy pill simultaneously and that is what we have been doing all our lives. And the result of following this compulsory prescription is Mensa ons will cut slap. Just look at the mess we are in. I had to say that in Afrikaans for impact. Saying it in any other language will lose its impact. The alarming concern is that those that belong to traditional Islam are fighting to retain that status quo. And this will get worse until and unless we go back to the Quran. The great error we made is that we abandoned the Quran. An even greater error is that we have sold or traded in our greatest asset for a miserable price. That asset, our greatest God-given asset, is the ability to think, reason, to apply rationale, and then of course common sense. We handed our brains on a golden platter to everyone and anyone that sold us beautiful fairy tales about Islam and Prophet Muhammad with the caption written in all caps. You say, we obey. That is why and how we lost our glorious past of being world leaders and trendsetters. The Jewish people started with the deen that Prophet Moses gave. But over time, over a few generations, they created a religion about Prophet Moses instead of following what Prophet Moses taught and in that way they lost the deen that Allah gave them. Then came Prophet Jesus and he gave them the deen of Allah to practice. But over a period of time, over a few generations, they created a new religion about Prophet Jesus instead of following what Prophet Jesus taught and in that way they lost the deen that Allah gave them. Finally, the advent of Prophet Muhammad and he gave his people the deen of Allah to practice. But over time, over a few generations, they created a new religion about, yes, about Prophet Muhammad instead of following what Prophet Muhammad taught and practiced. So basically, what transpired is that we have moved away from the deen of Allah, that is deen Allah. So it became a religion about Prophet Moses, a religion about Prophet Jesus. And we are no different. We have a very strong religion about, about Prophet Muhammad. Not the religion of Prophet Muhammad, a religion about Prophet Muhammad. The Islam that we are practicing is all about Prophet Muhammad and his companions, just like Christianity, which is all about Jesus and his disciples. What is the difference? So the central figurehead of these religions are the respective prophets. More reverence, glorifications and praises are in honor of these prophets than the one that sent these respective prophets. So the Jews, Christians and Muslims have put their respective prophets on a pedestal. Now, let us look at the reality of our beliefs and practices without any hypocrisy from ourselves. Saint Paul was not one of the appointed 12 disciples of Prophet Jesus. Jesus Christ never appointed Saint Paul while he walked the earth. Saint Paul appointed himself as a disciple of Jesus by some mysterious bright lights, according to the book of Acts. It could have been UFOs, I don't know. But it was mysterious and he appointed himself as a disciple of Jesus. Now, let us take a careful look at ourselves, we Muslims. Imam Bukhari was born 196 years after Hijrah, according to our history. That means that he definitely, definitely was not a companion of the Prophet. He was not even of the next generation, that is the Tabi'in. The question that demands a candid and honest answer is, who appointed Imam Bukhari to do what he did? That is, to compile narrations about the life of Prophet Muhammad. Now, before we answer, think carefully. Otherwise, the answer we provide will make us munafiks. So, before we attempt any form of support or justification of our belief and acceptance of Imam Bukhari's works, by what standard do we Muslims then reject St. Paul's claim that he was a disciple of Jesus? Think, my dear brothers and sisters. I appeal to you. Please think, my dear brothers and sisters. I know this is difficult, but as Muslims, we cannot apply double standards. 
Our rejection of St. Paul and all that Christianity stands for is not due to our education about Christianity. Our rejection of Christianity and all other religions is based on indoctrination and definitely not on any kind of education. We were just indoctrinated into all that we believe and accept. So let us begin to detox ourselves of that indoctrination. We openly ask the Christians, did God Almighty appoint St. Paul as a disciple of Jesus? The answer is no. Did Jesus, while he walked this earth, appoint St. Paul as a disciple? The answer again is no. Did the Holy Spirit appoint St. Paul as a disciple of Jesus? The answer again is no. Now, here is a bitter pull of truth that we have to swallow. And that too, if we can digest it. Did Allah appoint Imam Bukhari to write about Prophet Muhammad, his family and his companions and the history of his life? Common sense will tell you that Allah did not. Did the Prophet himself ask Imam Bukhari to write about him and his life? Again, common sense will tell you that the Prophet never gave him such instructions. Did Jibreel come to Imam Bukhari and instruct him to do what he did? Again, there is no evidence of such an instruction. So if Allah and the Prophet and Jibreel did not instruct Imam Bukhari to do what he did, then by whose authority did Imam Bukhari do what he did? And now, we Muslims walking the earth like paragons of virtue, the self-appointed chosen people of Allah, we reject St. Paul because God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit did not appoint him. But by the same standard, the same principle applies to Imam Bukhari. Allah and the Prophet nor Jibril had anything to do with the appointment of Imam Bukhari. Then by what authority do we Muslims accept and believe in Imam Bukhari and his unauthorized compilation of what we commonly call Sahih Bukhari? So we Muslims are no better than the Christians, if not worse. What St. Paul is to Christians is exactly what Imam Bukhari is to us Muslims. St. Paul took the followers of Prophet Jesus away from the teachings of Allah, that is the deen of Allah which was the Injil. Likewise, Imam Bukhari took the followers of Prophet Muhammad away from the teachings of Allah, that is the deen of Allah which is the Quran. So, the Jews are practicing a religion that was fabricated by people generations after Prophet Moses. The Christians are practicing a religion that was created by their top six. That is, the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the writings of Peter and St. Paul. That is their Sahih Hadith. That is their Sahih Sitta. And we Muslims are practicing a fabricated religion created by our top six, who are Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, Tirmizi and Nisai. So we also have our Sahi Sitta, our Hadith. They have a Sahi Sitta and we also have our Sahi Sitta. Their Sahi Sitta was not authorized by Allah nor their Prophet Jesus. Think, think slowly before you answer this question. Is our Sahi Sitta authorized by Allah or the Prophet Muhammad? So St. Paul took the people away from the Injil and gave them a man-made religion called Christianity. Imam Bukhari did the same thing as St. Paul. Imam Bukhari took the people away from the Quran by replacing the Quran with his books and his books of his contemporaries. That is the Sahih Sitta, the Hadith. But let us see what Allah has to say or rather question us regarding this matter in Surah 3 verse 83. أَفَ غَيْرَ دِينِ اللَّهِ يَبْغُونَ وَلَهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ do they seek for other than the deen of Allah while all creatures in the heavens and on earth have willingly or unwillingly surrendered to his will and to him shall they all be brought back. So when we are asked by Allah in the Quran, do they seek for other than the deen of Allah? The whole Sunni world says we want the religion of Imam Bukhari. We want the religion of Sahih Sitta. We want the religion of Hadith. So, to answer the question posed at the beginning of this video, how did we Muslim lose it all? The answer is simple. We lost it all because we abandoned the Quran and chose to practice the fabrications of mere men above the impeccable words of Allah, which is the Quran. Based on the standards set by ourselves to judge the Christians 
and our judgment is that they are practicing paganism, then we have to apply the same standard to ourselves. And if we do, then we must ask ourselves, what are we practicing? Until my next video, do keep well. I am Ayub Karim from Quran Inspires Me. Understand the Quran to experience the revelation. Salamun Alaikum. Peace be with you.